about Doppler effect. So Doppler effect is the observed change in frequency of a wave due to the motion of the source of the waves or due to the motion of the observer, or maybe both. So let me give you an example. Suppose that you're standing on the road and there is an ambulance that is driving uh, towards you. So the ambulance has a velocity and the sound of, that the ambulance is producing has a frequency fs. So the s is going to stand here for source. The source of the waves in this case is the ambulance. So fs is the frequency of the sound produced by the ambulance as measured by say the driver of the ambulance and a person that is at the source of the waves. Now with Doppler effect it turns out that the frequency that you hear is different I'm going to call this frequency that you hear the frequency of the observer, FO. The frequency that the observer hears is going to be different from the frequency emitted by the source. In fact, as the ambulance approaches you, you hear a frequency, and as the ambulance moves away from you, you will hear a different frequency. And it turns out that the frequency uh, for approach is bigger than the frequency when the ambulance is receding or moving away from you. So let me give you a quick idea of why this should be the case. So when the source is moving towards you, uh, the wave fronts, that is the crest of the waves produced by the source, they gain, get they get bunched up in the front of the ambulance. When the ambulance passes you, the waves that you receive are the waves coming from the back of the ambulance, and those waves are more spread out than the waves in the front of the ambulance. Now let me uh, show you why that should be the case. Suppose that you have, that you emit, the, that there is a source at a particular location that it emits a wavefront that I'm gonna call wavefront A. So that wavefront is emitted, let's say that it moves to the left towards the location of the observer, and sometime later, that wavefront A is at a different location. Now if the source had not been moving, then the next wavefront, that I'm gonna call B, will be produced at the location of the source and the distance between the two wavefronts is, uh, is what we call the wavelength of the wave. So lambda would be uh, the wavelength distance between A and B. Now if the source is moving, things are a little bit different because a wavefront emitted at point A will travel to the left with the velocity of sound in this case and by the time the next wavefront is emitted the source, in this case the ambulance, has moved to the right a certain distance. So when the next wavefront B is emitted, now you can see that the distance between A and B, the distance between two wavefronts, between two crests of the sound wave, has increased compared to the situation where the uh, source of sound is not moving. Same analysis can be done for the approaching situation. Right? When the ambulance is approaching you, at some point, a wavefront is produced. Let's say that uh, that wavefront, we're going to label it A. The wavefront moves to the right. Sometime later, the wavefront is at this new location. But the ambulance has moved in the same direction. It has the velocity, the source, in this case, is moving in the same direction as the waves. So wavefront B is now emitted at this uh, location. And you can see that the distance between the two wavefronts, lambda, is smaller compared to the case that we just discussed where the ambulance was moving away from you. Okay, So the conclusion of this quick analysis is that the wavelength of the waves in front of the ambulance is small and that the wavelength of the waves on the back of the ambulance is going to be larger. Now what's the connection between the wavelength and the frequency? The equation for any wave, any traveling wave, is that the wavelength multiplied by the frequency is the velocity. So you see that if the wavelength grows, the frequency has to decrease. So in the parts of the, in the situation where the uh, wavelength is small, the frequency that you perceive will be big, and in the situation where the uh, wavelength of the wave is big, that is when the ambulance already passed you, then the frequency that you will hear will be small. So high frequency, approaching and low frequency receding. But that's not the only situation where you uh, will have some Doppler effect going on. The other possibility is when the observer is what's moving and the source is stationary. Now, in a, for, for an observer that is not moving, 
the source will emit wavefronts. Those wavefronts will propagate away from the source with the velocity v waves that I'm calling here. And the frequency observed will be the velocity of the wave divided by the wavelength. That's the basic equation for waves. Now, when the observer moves, let's say that the observer is going to move in the direction of the source, is going to be approaching the source. The wavelength, which is the distance between the wavefronts, is not changing. That distance is determined by the velocity of the waves and the frequency of the source. But what's changing is now the velocity with which the wavefronts approach you, the observer. The relative velocity of the waves with respect to you, the driver in the car, is now the velocity of the waves with respect to ground plus the velocity of the car. The waves are going to be approaching the car with a faster speed than if you were not moving. So that tells you that the frequency that the observer hears is going to be the velocity of the waves plus the velocity of the car divided by the wavelength of the waves in the situation where you're approaching the source. And when the observer is receding or moving away from the source, you see that the velocity of the waves with respect to the car will be velocity of the waves with respect to ground minus the velocity of the car and that will result in a smaller frequency velocity of the waves minus the velocity of the car divided by the wavelength so in this case you see that again there is a change in frequency between approaching and receding that the frequency uh, upon approach is bigger than the frequency for receding now the basic equation that you can use to solve any kind of Doppler effect problem where there is motion of the observer or motion of the source or maybe motion of both observer and source is, is the one that you're seeing here. VW is the velocity of the waves, VO is the velocity of the observer, VS is the velocity of the source, FS is the frequency of the wave uh, emitted by the source, and FO as we discussed is the frequency uh, observed or heard by the observer if, we, if we're talking about sound. So this is a very simple equation. It takes care of all of the possibilities that you could have, one, uh, the source or the observer or both moving. The only thing that you have to be careful with this equation is that it needs a certain sign convention. So the sign convention that we adopt for, to uh, use this equation is that the velocity of the waves, the direction in which the waves move from source to observer, that's always gonna be our positive direction, okay? So if we have, say, an ambulance on the left, an observer on the right, and the ambulance uh, and the observer are moving, well, the velocity of the, say that they're moving uh, towards each other. So the velocity of the source, if they're moving towards each other, will be a positive direction. So we will use the velocity of the source as a positive number. If it's, uh, say, 40 meters per second, we will plug in the equation, a positive 40 meters per second so for the velocity of the source. So that velocity of the source should be used as a positive but that means that the negative sign in front of Vs does not change because the Vs value is positive, but you still have a negative sign in the basic equation that we're going to use. So for the situation that we have here with the source and the observer moving towards each other, the velocity of the source will be used as a positive value. The velocity of the obs observer, which is, as you can see, is to the left compared to the velocity of the waves, which is to the right means that the velocity of the observer has to be taken with a negative sign in front, which means that in our equation, we replace, for VO, we replace minus VO. So once you do that replacement there, the uh, negative sign in the numerator turns into a plus, and the equation that would describe this situation of both the source and the observer moving towards each other would involve the speed of the observer and the speed of the source, but you have to use the positive sign in the numerator and a negative sign for the denominator. So let me give you an example with numbers. So you see a couple of examples with numbers to illustrate how you use this. So let's say that the ambulance is uh, emitting a sound wave with a frequency of 500 hertz. Let's say that the ambulance is moving to the right with a velocity of 40 meters per second. And let's say that you're driving a car that is in front of the ambulance and that the velocity of the car is 30 meters per second. The question, of course, is what's going to be the frequency heard by the driver in the car? We know it's going to be different from 500, but is it going to be bigger or smaller? So we have an equation that we can use and remember that the velocity 
the wave that is propagating in this uh, case is a sound wave and for sound a good number to use for the velocity is 343 meters per second and the uh, formula that we need to use involves those values but now we have to be careful with the sign that we're going to assign to the velocity of the observer and the velocity of the source so velocity of the wave 343 and to the right that defines our positive direction so a velocity that goes to the right is going to be positive a velocity that goes to the left is going to be negative for the velocity of the observer, the car, it's 30 meters per second and moving to the right. So we're going to use that as a positive 30 meters per second that we will plug in the formula. For the velocity of the source, we have 40 meters per second also to the right. So in our equation, we're going to plug in a positive sign for the velocity of the source also. So replacing all the information that we have in the equation, we have the velocity of the wave is 343. The velocity of the observer is 30, so we have 343 minus 30 in the numerator, and in the denominator we have 343 VW minus VS, VS is 40, so 343 minus 40. Multiplied all that by the frequency of the sound emitted at the source, which is 500 hertz. So plugging the numbers gives us that the person in the car will hear a frequency of 516.5 hertz. So a higher frequency than what the ambulance is actually emitting, what the person in the ambulance, driving the ambulance, will hear. Now, same situation, but now let's assume same numbers, but let's assume that the ambulance already passed you, right? The ambulance was moving faster than you at 40 meters per second, so at some point the ambulance will overtake you and pass you. So now the ambulance is in front of you, moving at 40, the car still moving at 30, a sound emitted by the or in this case the source, which is the ambulance, the frequency of the source is still 500 hertz. The question is what's going to be the frequency heard by the observer. So in the, the difference with the previous situation is, now, is that now the source is in front of the car, the ambulance is in front of the car. So the waves that arrive at the car are moving from right to left, from the ambulance to the car. So now we're going to use that as a positive direction of propagation. So 343 uh, going to the left is going to be our positive direction for the velocity of the waves. So compared to that uh, direction, we can evaluate the velocity of the observer and the velocity of the source. The velocity of the observer, the car, well, is 30 meters per second moving to the right. But since the positive direction is to the left, that means that we have to use a minus 30 meters per second for the velocity of the car once we plug it into the equation. For the velocity of the source, we have 40 meters per second. That is, the ambulance is moving at 40 meters per second to the right. The, uh, going to the left is the positive direction, which tells us that the velocity of the ambulance needs to be plugged in as a minus 40 meters per second. So now we have everything. We are ready to plug in the values in our basic equation. So VW minus VO over VW minus VS multiplied by FS. So notice that the velocity of the observer, VO, is minus 30. But we have a minus in front of it. So the numerator is going to turn into 343 plus 30. And the numerator, I mean, sorry, and the denominator is going to turn into 343 plus 40. And then we multiply by 500, the frequency of the source. So once we do that, we get the frequency of the observer is 486.9 hertz. So this is about uh, 13 hertz below 500, which is the frequency emitted by the ambulance. So after the ambulance passes you, the frequency drops by 13 hertz compared to the frequency of the sound produced by the ambulance itself. And in the previous example, when the ambulance was approaching you, we saw that the frequency is 516.5 hertz, about 16.5 hertz above the 500 Hertz, which is the frequency of the sound emitted by the ambulance. So as the ambulance approaches you, you hear higher frequency sound, higher pitch, and when the ambulance passes you, you will hear a lower frequency sound, which is the characteristic of a Doppler effect situation. All right, I hope, you this, uh, I hope that this helps you understand how to use the equation for Doppler effect. See you in the next video.